Welcome back to Mantic Stringworks. Glad to have you here. Looking forward to this video. Please remember to like and subscribe for more content. So today on the bench we have a 2016 Squire fretless jazz bass. Needs a setup. That's about it. All right, so on the bench we've got this nice Squire fretless jazz bass. Um, it's got a few changes, a few modifications. We've got some Seymour Duncan quarter pounder jazz pickups. Also we have concentric knobs here, so we have volume and tone for each of the two pickups. So that's a nice little feature. I like that instead of having three. Bridge is stock, the tuners are stock. Really nice bass though, so Client wants me to have a look at it, do a setup. It's been sitting around for a while, not changing the strings. Just going to do a basic setup, make sure everything's working okay. Okay, a good place to start is with the electronics and the pickups. Make sure everything's working okay. No static, pots don't need to be cleaned. We'll see. Alright, so with these stack knobs, this is the volume and that's the tone. Yeah, so that's that's working. We'll do the pickup test. Yeah, that's good. Let's turn that volume off. Bridge pickup. And the tone works. And the tap test. Definitely good. If we turn both of them on. That's working too. Okay, electronics are good. This is a passive bass, so there's going to be a little bit of noise, right, with a jazz bass. Especially when you have one of the pickups off. But all in all, that seems to be working fine. Alright, well let's move on to the neck relief. So fretless bass, just like a fretted bass, you take the same measurements. In this case, it's not from the top of the fret to the underside of the string. It's basically the fretboard, so the top of the fretboard to the underside of the string, but the measurements are the same. So we like to see about 10 to 12 thousandths of an inch neck relief at the 7th fret. So we're going to put our capo on, okay, on the 1st fret, and then we're going to fret down, here I'll move this a bit, fret down near the body, so somewhere around the 19th, 20th fret, around there, 21st fret. And that'll create our little straight edge, right? And then that way we can measure the relief here. So I'll start with a 12 thousandths feeler gauge. And we'll press down the string. We'll go to the seventh. And I'm just, I gotta push it under there. So let's try 10. 10 thousandths. That slides under there with a little bit of resistance. We'll go to eight. You can hear that, right? So it's still touching. So I'll probably put a little bit of relief in the neck. We'll play it and see if there's any buzzing, but 10 to 12 thousandths will pretty much guarantee that you're not gonna have any buzzing going on. Alright, so we've got the 4mm wrench here, the ball in. So we're going to loosen up the truss rod a little bit, get a little more relief. So we're going to turn that counterclockwise, lefty loosey. I'm just going to do a little, maybe eighth of a turn. And I'm going to check here. 
Move this a little bit, and we can see. Let's get the ten thousandths feeler gauge. Oh yeah, that's better. It's not quite touching. We'll try the twelve now. Of course, it has flat wound strings, right? So it's it's hard to hear. <laughs> Round wounds will scrape along. I can just feel that. Oh, I like that. That'll be good relief. So we'll leave it right there. Alright, so now we'll check the string height. So this is a fender base, 34 inch scale. So fender, we like to check the string height at the 17th fret. You can check it at the 12th, wherever you like, but Fender recommends the 17th. And I'll use my string gauge here. So 564 and 664. So the low end we like to see 5, at the high end 6 for playability. And again, just like a fretted bass, we're just going to check and see. So I'll start with 6. So 17th, we don't have fret markers here, but they're on the side. Yeah, I can't get that underneath on either side. So let's go to five. So that goes under, but just barely. Same thing here. So now what I'm going to do is break out the fourth <laughs> 64. So let's try that. So again, 17th. Well, that's a lot better. So I would say the action is probably a little bit low, but again, if it's playable and it doesn't buzz, then it's not bad. But I think we'll move it up to five. That'll just make it a little more playable in that sense. All right, so let's get back to the string height. I want to make this 564 at the 17th. So I can barely get that 564 under there. So we're going to raise up the saddle a little bit. So I'll take some tension off the string. Go up on both sides of the saddle, of course, keeping it straight and even. There we go. That's nice. I'm just barely touching it. Nice. OK. So let's do the A string. Again, I'll relieve a bit of tension. Make a, it's about a half turn I'm doing here. I'm going to use a gauge. You can hear that, right? I think we need to raise it just a little bit more. So maybe a quarter turn. Again, do it equally on the saddles. There we go. That's good. Let me do the D and the G string. So I want to check the intonation on the bass. Uh, I tuned up the bass before we checked any of the neck relief or string height. So now let's just check and see Tuning's pretty good. Now let's check at the 12th fret, the harmonic. It's nice. Seems to be a touch flat. A looks good. E, not bad. Now again, on a fretless bass, where you fret is going to make a big difference, right? So if I fret right on the line, that's not bad, but if look if I go back a little bit, or I go forward a little bit, see? So really it's about the touch. Let's try it here on the D string. So that's not bad. Again, go back a little bit, go forward. Let's go to the A. It's nice. The intonation is actually 
pretty good on the A, D, and G. I'd probably say the E. Look at that. That's sharp. Can bring it back a bit. I think we might have to adjust the intonation on the E string right here. So we'll remember to do that once we raise the string height a little bit. So when we check the intonation, we notice that the E string was sharp. So that means we have to try and move this saddle back, lengthening the string to flatten it out a little bit, right? So we'll see how much room we have there. Yeah, I'm going to have to loosen up the string first. There we go. Release a bit of tension. Now I'm going to try and move that back. Well, probably about an eighth of an inch or so we're measuring. So you sort of eyeball it right at first. Okay. Let me tune it back up. And then you check it out, right? So the open and the harmonic and then the fretted note. So let me show you on the tuner. So let's do the open E. So we're showing a little flat here, right? So we're going to tune that up a bit. Harmonic, not bad, a little flat. Do that again. These are older strings too, so not sure how well they're going to hold their tuning. <laughs> Plus the strobe tuner is pretty sensitive. Right? And let's try the fretted note. So again, fretted, uh, fretless bass, sort of want to be right on the line or just behind it, just a hair. It's, you know, it's feel, right? I can move back, I can move forward. But that's looking pretty good. Again, with a fretless bass, you sort of expect a little bit of intonation change, right? That's part of the character of a fretless bass. I think I'm going to move it back a little further, though, and we'll be all set. All right, so let's have a look at the action at the first fret, the nut action. So here we want a height of about 20 thousandths, anywhere between 18 and 22 thousandths underneath the string. So let's start at 22, the high end. We're not really touching there. Uh, it's not bad. See, I don't hear any bouncing, right? So same thing here. So that's pretty good. If I take an 18 thousandths, yeah, not bad at all. So I'm going to say that we'll leave the first fret action where it is. We won't take anything out of there. Uh, it's playable, it's easy to play. Now again, you can push down on the third fret area. <laughs> of course, there's no fret here and just see how easy it is to play the string. <laughs> yeah, so that's good. We're going to leave that the way it is. Alright, so intonation's done, neck relief, the string height is good, so now the last thing to do is check the pickup height. And so we start off with an eighth of an inch on the bass side, 3 30 seconds on the treble side. And again, that's a starting point. See what you like, but generally. So we fret down at the last fret area <laughs> and then we check the height. So I, can, I should raise that up a little bit. Same thing here. And we'll switch over. Yeah, both sides are low. So what's going to happen when it's too low? You're going to lose a little bit of volume, right? A little bit of presence. So it's a good idea check that every once in a while especially if you feel like you're you're not 
it's not coming through the mix too well, you know. So we'll just raise those screws up a bit. That's better. Now I'm just touching the underside of the string. Same thing here. Of course, using brass, it doesn't stick to the magnet, right? It's non-magnetic. You can use an Allen key. That works. It'll stick, though. <laughs> so we're going to loosen that up a bit. Now you see that there's probably foam or something under there. It's really this side that moves. Base side. There we go. Give those a little wiggle sometimes to get them going. That's good. That's not bad. Let's see if that foam might need to be replaced under there soon. We'll see once the client gets the base back. Very nice. Well, I think that's it for this setup. Love fretless bases. Looks great. Alright, well that's it for this base. Thanks for watching. Let's see uh, what it sounds like. Mm -hmm.